Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you for joining me for another Distress Oxide Ripe Persimmon video this time. So we are working through the Distress Oxide inks alphabetically, looking at each one individually and looking at it swatched on cardstock, looking at how it blends with other colours, how it compares with other colours in the range and of course I'm giving you two new uh, colour combinations for you to go away and try. So first of all, let's look at Ripe Persimmon when it is first swatched. I'm going to pop this one into the middle of this cardstock. Now everything I'm using today is linked down below for you. So that includes the brushes that I'm using, of course the inks, um, the blending mats that I'm going on to. So there's just this little six by six blending mat. It comes with an A4 one as well in the pack um, and everything else, even, even the color charts, they're all linked for you. You'll find them all there. I get a lot of questions about things like the cardstock as well. That's all there. So this is what ripe persimmon looks like when it's first blended. It is a beautiful kind of coral orange color. Now, if we have a look at this compared to the label, we're actually, it's pretty close. So it's pretty accurate. If you're going for this and looking at the label and not sure what it's going to look like when it's blended, I think you're going to be okay with this one. Obviously the ink pad is darker. We always expect that, but it is still pretty accurate. Um, sometimes if you're thinking, well, yeah, that's crazy. Of course it is. Actually, some of the videos, if you watch back, if you go along to the playlist here and go and look at some of the other colors, some of them actually, the ink pad doesn't look anything like the ink when it's first blended, really strangely. So let's just clean up my blending mat for a second and let's see how this compares. Now I wanted to show you a new color chart that I've got available on my blog now. This is the one that we usually look at and this one is one that you can print off at home. I've laminated mine, print it off and fill in the colors yourself as and when you purchase them and add them to your stash. And as you can see, it goes along in color groups. We've got everything here all the way through to the neutrals and the black and white at the end. So let's take a look first of all. I'm going to pick out the pinks the reds and the oranges because I think ripe persimmon really does sort of go across all three of these so let's see ripe persimmon at the top there you can see beautiful orange color spice marmalade just below it is kind of a little bit lighter a little bit paler more of an orange than uh, it hasn't really got a pinky tone to it that ripe persimmon has Carved Pumpkin is quite a dark orange also, actually also quite close. Now coming here, now if we're looking at Crackling Campfire within the reds, that's starting to get towards the oranges. So I would say if you're looking at any of the combinations that I'm doing in a little while and wondering if you can do that with other colours that you've got, I would say definitely Spice Marmalade, Carved Pumpkin, maybe even Crackling Campfire you could try these with. Now, I said about this being like a coral, so I am going to come over to the corals and I would say abandoned coral is, obviously it's a lot more pink, but it's not too dissimilar. But still, certainly ripe persimmon stands on its own. So that's one way of looking at this. Now, I want to show you this color chart as well. This is another one that you can print off at home from my website completely free for you to download. Now, this one is already filled in for you. I have to say that colors may vary depending on your printer, but these are scanned images at 300 DPI of the um, actual blended inks. So they're as close as I can get them for you, but this is an overview of all the colors. So it's a really nice way if you're just taking a quick glance rather than going through your color chart, and particularly if you're looking for which color you might like to have next and add next to your stash, this is a really good way of doing it. So um, download that, maybe pop that on your craft room wall as well. Linked down below, I don't ask you for anything, no email sign up or anything like that for downloading these. So let's get on to some color combinations then. So the first one is going to be Tattered Rose into Ripe Persimmon and then a blast of color or different color with Cracked Pistachio. I just think this gives me um, sort of summertime, seaside vibes, I love it. So I love teal and I love mint and all those greens and blues. So we're going to mix those in. Now let's start the bottom here with Tattered Rose. This is an extremely pale color, but I think it is definitely 
a paler shade of ripe persimmon. I think they work really, really well together. So I'm going to first of all fill this area of the swatch with the tattered rose. I'm not worrying about blending at the moment, I'm just filling it in with solid colour. Then with what's left on my brush, I'm very gently going to work round in circles over the tattered rose there. Not too much because I don't want to bring the ripe persimmon all the way down. Then, because it's a much darker colour, I'm going to load up my brush with more tattered rose and I'm going to work upwards in small circles. And you see how these two just blend together so beautifully. So let's give this a wipe. Now I always wipe my mat between swatches just because you don't want to put, for example, any of the orange into the green. And let's pick up Cracked Pistachio now and blend this one in. So this is a gorgeous mint green. Now Cracked Pistachio does have its own video already on the YouTube channel. Now as these two are mixing, we're actually getting a third colour. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. And we are getting it with this one. So that just means that the blending needs to be a little more, I need to be a bit more careful not to drag either of the colours into each other. So I'm going to work along that line, making sure I'm working across all the time and not up and down. So hopefully you can see that third colour just coming in there. Of course, green and red together do make a brown, so it's to be expected, but I still love, it's almost a purple actually, it's almost a purple, but I do still love the combination of the two together. So this is the sort of blend, the mix, where I would work at it it's over and over again. I've got a bit of red there that's just going up. So what I'll do is I'll wipe my mat, dry my mat because I don't want the inks reacting with any moisture that's on the mat. Pick up some cracked pistachio. Once more, just go over that where I want the solid color, eliminating that kind of red patch. Not going into the blended ink, just kind of solidifying where I want the solid colour to be. So I'm going to pop that to the side because these always look kind of smoother, I guess, once they're dry. So let's go on to a, another combination, one more for you. Now this one's going to be with four colours. And this one's actually quite tonal, but I'm thinking it's getting towards autumn now um, and these are going to be beautiful autumnal colours. So we're going to start first of all with carved pumpkin. Then we're going to go into the ripe persimmon. Then we're going, uh, going to go into uh, Kraken Campfire and then aged mahogany. Now these ones, we certainly shouldn't have any issues blending together whatsoever. So starting with Crackling Campfire, definitely more yellow in this than orange. Then into ripe persimmon. So I often replace my lids on my inks while I'm blending because I tend to have quite a lot in my brush already. So for example here, I need to blend from the ripe persimmon into the carved pumpkin. I've got plenty on my brush there that I can do that with. And to be honest, the two colors go so well together. I don't even need to worry about adding any additional color there. So bringing that ripe persimmon up a little bit. Now I'm not going to be uh, wiping my mat just now because the colors are working so well together. I more wipe it when I'm switching to a completely different color or if I need to move around on my mat. So in a moment, I'm going to turn this round and I'll be working on the other end. So then I will definitely be giving that a wipe. But look at that. So we've gone from carved pumpkin, ripe persimmon, crackling campfire, and it's just beautiful. Like I say, let's give this one last wipe. With a wet wipe, you can use a water spritz and a dry towel if you wish, rather than a wet wipe depends what you prefer to use and then aged mahogany so the darker color at this end and that will work beautifully into crackling campfire so just working that round and again taking crackling campfire with the ink that's already on there and letting that work in so i'm not applying any more ink i'm not overloading it with ink there we go. I have put a finger smudge in there. That's in the right persimmon, so give that a bit of a wipe. 
Isn't that just beautiful? Love, love, love that. Okay, so let's clean this up and let's take a look at both of these combinations together and particularly that first one now that has dried. And if you enjoy these videos, please do subscribe to my channel and check out, of course, the, um, the playlist here. So we've got a playlist with all the colour combinations that I've already worked on and every colour will be uploaded here eventually. So go and check that out. So there's the colours I used and there's the swatches. So you can see we've got that fourth colour coming in, um, but it's still equally beautiful. I think that definitely for a Hawaiian colour theme, that would work perfectly.